start or expand your food business by importing food into the United States, this video will guide you through the import process for foods, providing an overview of the steps to import, regulatory requirements, and tips for successful importation. Importing food into the United States requires compliance with specific regulations and requirements set by the U.S. Food and Drug Administration, or FDA, to ensure the safety and quality of imported food. The FDA regulates roughly 80% of the U.S. food supply, including a wide range of products such as fruits and vegetables, seafood, game and exotic meats, dairy, eggs, beverages, baked goods and candy, baby food, condiments, snacks, spices, nuts and seeds, color and food additives, and more. You may recognize many of these products at your local grocery store. They may also be imported in bulk for commercial or restaurant use, or for further processing or packaging. Food regulated by the FDA also includes food imported for research and development, trade shows, or even for personal use. Join us as we follow Sarah, a wholesale food business owner, on her journey through the FDA importation process. We'll walk her through researching the requirements, preparing to import, declaring the shipment information, and finally, obtaining an FDA admissibility decision. Researching the requirements. Successfully importing safe and compliant food starts with having a good understanding of the products you wish to import. Sarah's journey begins with a visit to the FDA's Importing Human Foods page found at www.fda.gov imports, where she can learn more about the import process and food specific requirements. She then compiles information on each product, including details on how it is made, labeled, and packaged, as well as verifying information about her suppliers and their facilities. With this information in hand, Sarah can begin researching the regulations and requirements that apply to each product, including food facility registration, food safety standards, nutrition and labeling, prior notice and additional requirements dependent upon the product. Let's walk through a general overview of these requirements with Sarah. Food Facility Registration Sarah's product manufacturers may be required to register with the FDA as food establishments. In most cases, any foreign or domestic facility that manufactures, processes, packages, or holds food for consumption in the United States must be registered. The FDA's website provides helpful guidance documents to assist Sarah in determining if her suppliers are required to be registered. Sarah should work closely with each of her suppliers to confirm if they have an active food facility registration number, or she can provide them with the link where they can register online. Registration can be done free of cost through the FDA Industry Systems Portal on the FDA website. Food Safety Standards Next, Sarah and her suppliers need to be familiar with the FDA's food safety requirements. This includes knowing about the rules outlined in the FDA's Food Safety Modernization Act, or FSMA. FSMA requires covered facilities throughout the entire supply chain to perform specific actions to prevent food contamination. Sarah's suppliers need to comply with applicable manufacturing, processing, and transporting rules under FSMA, such as current good manufacturing practices, the human food preventive controls, and the produce safety rule. As the importer, Sarah needs to comply with the Foreign Supplier Verification Program, or FSVP rule, for most of the foods she wants to import. This means she must verify that her foreign suppliers are meeting the same food safety standards that the FDA requires of domestic producers. For each food product and supplier, Sarah must establish a written plan 
that describes how she verifies the supplier has adequate food safety controls in place to prevent contamination or other hazards. These documents are subject to inspection by the FDA at any time when requested. She is also required to obtain an FSVP importer, Unique Facility Identifier, or UFI, and provide it to the FDA at the time of import. The FDA's website provides a wealth of guidance documents, materials, and assistance for industry related to FSMA and FSVP, all available on fda.gov slash FSMA. If Sarah decides to import juice or seafood products, she will need to comply with a similar but different set of food safety regulations called Hazard Analysis and Critical Control Point, or HACCP. Like the FISMA preventive controls, HACCP is a systematic approach to identify, evaluate, and control food safety hazards. Sarah should be aware that importers of seafood must conduct special verification activities similar to the FSVP rule. Sarah can consult the FDA's website and applicable regulations to learn more. Lastly, Sarah should review any record keeping and reporting requirements that she is required to comply with. Nutrition and Labeling after ensuring her suppliers are registered and meet the FDA's food safety requirements, Sarah should make sure the products are labeled appropriately. The FDA's food labeling guide and other materials available on our website can help determine compliance. A food label should include the product's common or usual name, the net quantity of contents, a list of ingredients, the nutrition facts, and the name and place of business of the manufacturer, packer, or distributor. Details on these requirements and many commonly asked questions are all answered in the Food Labeling Guide. It is important that the labels are in English and contain an allergen statement when applicable. Prior Notice Another requirement to keep in mind is called Prior Notice. The FDA requires advance notice of food shipments before they arrive in the U.S. to review, evaluate, and intercept intentionally contaminated products. Prior notice contains information about the product, quantity, and responsible parties. This helps protect Americans against an attack on our nation's food supply and other public health emergencies. Additional Requirements Finally, Sarah should be aware that certain foods may have additional requirements, such as restricted uses, identification requirements, and specifications that food products and ingredients must adhere to. Approval, certification, permits, additional registrations, or notification prior to marketing may be required for foods such as low-acid canned foods, acidified foods, grade-A dairy products, infant formula, medical foods, and food and color additives. Sarah can find more information by referring to FDA guidance materials, such as guidance for industry, compliance programs, compliance policy guides, as well as the regulations found in Title 21 of the Code of Federal Regulations, all available on our public website at fda.gov. Declaring the shipment. Once Sarah is ready to import her products, she will need to declare them to U.S. Customs and Border Protection, known simply as Customs, or CBP. She can use a licensed customs broker to act on her behalf and help her navigate this process. The broker can electronically transmit her shipment data in the automated commercial environment or ACE, which allows for real-time communication with customs and other agencies, like the FDA. Sarah needs to provide her broker with details about the shipment and the products she is importing. This includes product names, descriptions, each product's intended use, and the name and address of the responsible parties, 
such as the manufacturer, shipper, importer, and consignee. She should provide the manufacturer's food facility registration number, FSVP importer's unique facility identifier, and any other required data elements when applicable. Just remember that prior notice also must be submitted for each food item before it arrives in the U.S. Sarah can ask her broker to transmit the prior notice in ACE, or she can submit it herself in the prior notice system interface, or PINZI. Access to PINZI, step-by-step -step guides, and other guidance documents are available on the FDA's website at fda.gov slash prior notice. The FDA Admissibility Process. Once Sarah's shipment is declared or transmitted to the FDA, the FDA will review the details to determine if the products are admissible. During this time, Customs may conditionally release the products to Sarah's possession. However, she should keep the products intact until the FDA makes a decision. Keeping the products near the port of entry will also speed up the review process if an FDA examination is requested. The FDA uses risk-based electronic screening tools, physical examination, and sample collection to help verify compliance with FDA laws and regulations. Products that are ultimately found compliant can be released, while non-compliant products may be refused entry into the United States. You can find a more detailed discussion of this process in our other YouTube video, Importing FDA Regulated Products, The Import Process. To ensure her products are reviewed as quickly as possible, Sarah should track her shipment and respond to any FDA requests in a timely manner. She can monitor status, submit documents, provide exam locations, and obtain notices of FDA action on the FDA's Import Trade Auxiliary Communication System, or ITAX, at itax.fda.gov. One last note, Sarah may also want to check out the FDA's Voluntary Qualified Importer Program, or VQIP, which is a fee-based program that allows qualified importers, with a high level of control over the safety and security of their food, to import with greater speed and predictability. To learn more about importing human foods, the general FDA import process, and special programs like FSVP and VQIP, please visit the FDA's website at fda.gov imports. You can also find the links that were mentioned in this video below. We look forward to working with you and helping you bring safe and compliant food products into the United States.